Hello there, and welcome to a beautiful first day of September 2012. And the summer is still here, and, you know, kids are going back to school. Actually, some of them already have gone, the ones that aren't going back next week. And, you know, everybody's going to be really into fashion, as they always are. You know, new school clothes and all that. Some things really never do change. Well, I'm going to be talking today about the idea of unisex clothing. Now, I'm sure there are maybe hundreds of uh, vlogs on YouTube already that discuss this subject matter, but I'm just going to discuss it from my point of view, um, from the past and in the present, and maybe in the future even, if I can be lucky enough to do that. Uh, anyway, uh, yesterday I was um, with my lover in um, Hot Topics in the mall. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that store. And we were looking over t-shirts and having a great time, and we noticed this body armor. It was a device that went over your hands like that. There were these long metal tendrils. It resembled uh, a prop worn by the character of Seven of Nine on Star Trek Voyager. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that. And I just thought it was really cool and really masculine. But it wouldn't fit over my thumb, and I was actually kind of laughing about it. And one of the men came over and said, who worked at the store, and said, you know, that's actually for girls. And, you know, I can't even get it over my hand. And I thought, you know, when I was growing up, that kind of dangerous metal-looking device would have been very much for the most macho and brood of men and, and how things have changed. And it helped me to recall a story uh, that happened when I was about 11, maybe. I was in a store that no longer exists on uh, Broadway called... Um, Libby's card and gift looking for a Father's Day card for my dad. And in those days, I was letting my hair grow out pretty naturally and just shampooing and combing it. And it was this big, wavy, curly, thick mane that looked not unlike Kenny G. Anyway, uh, um, a lady who I guess was the manager came over and she said to me, I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong section. And I said, ma'am, I don't understand. And she said, oh, these are Father's Day cards from a son. I had a lot of thoughts in my head about that, but I thought it would be futile to explain to her, especially at my age, you know, being 11 and her being, let's just put it this way, probably dead or close to dying by now from just the general look of her. She was probably about 70, 80 then, in the early 90s, uh, explaining to her that I was a boy. So I went out and I asked my father to come in. Um, nothing to do with cars. They had to make your own card machine. And he wore a faux beard at that time. And the lady who had referred to me in that way had referred to him as a she as well. And I remember my dad saying, well, I'm obviously not a woman and neither is my son. And, you know, I thank you for sticking up for me and all that. But, you know, it really wasn't too necessary. You know, we went through the 1960s during a time where we had the sexual revolution and there was this sense of people trying to de-emphasize fashion in a sense that girls looked like boys and boys looked like girls and there were not different sets of looks for each people. The people looked the way they wanted to look. And that extended through the 70s and into the 80s. And then we got into the 90s when girls and boys of all sorts all wanted to look dreary and unkept. You know... People will deny it, maybe, but I was there, saw it go down. And now we come to the um, 21st century, where the same sexual divisions in terms of fashion in society are the same way they kind of were in the 1950s. You know, girls like the same things boys do, only in prettier colors. That seems to be the attitude. And, I mean, you go into the stores, and yes, you see mod fashion from the 60s, you know, for nostalgic purposes, maybe, and the ripped jeans from the 90s, and you hardly ever see the faded jeans from the 80s. But in terms of fashion, after a while, it has nothing to do with the fabric or the color. It has to do with sugar, spice, and everything nice, and what girls and boys are supposed to look like. And then you come into the fact that, you know, same-sex marriage and LGBT rights are becoming a more prominent issue in society. And, you know, there's, of course, a lot of transgenderism in there. And it's confusing people. Who's a boy and who's the girl? What's for what? 
person and what's for the other. And there's always that other. And I notice I mentioned the word other a lot in these videos, but it's true. There's always another. And it's pretty silly. You know, why should girls be tough or boys be tough and then the other person be only the other? What happened to the idea of the 60s where we could all just be comfortable wearing whatever? What happened to taking the sexuality out of somebody's appearance? A person's sexuality, their masculinity or their femininity isn't defined by how they look. That's the way I've always felt and that's always be, will be the way I feel. Uh, it's in your heart and in your mind, whether you're straight, um, heterosexual, homosexual, transgendered, uh, bisexual, whatever. It's in your mind, it's in your heart, it's not on your face, on your hair, or on your body. And I think if more people came to understand that, not only will we have more genuinely unisex things to buy in stores on the corporate end of it, but I think people's hearts would warm toward those who were different from them. And that's just my two cents about fashion, sexuality, and what the girls and boys are going to do this year. See you next time.